The second health concern with plant-based foods is actually the fact that there is a lot of toxin generation. However, during the process of photosynthesis, paradoxically, they're actually killing themselves at a very, very rapid rate. Now, some of those problems that those plant phytotoxins can cause when it comes to inflammation could be something like arthritis, it could be brain fog, or it could even be depression. <laughs> Now you might have heard of the word organic or you might have even seen in many, many stores that word being tossed around everywhere. And you also probably heard that organic is healthier for you. However, in this video, I'm gonna be explaining why organic actually isn't healthier for you. And we're gonna be doing this a couple ways, but afterwards, we're also gonna be looking at plant biology and why exactly organic isn't healthy. And more specifically, what exactly is so important about plant biology which makes organic not healthy? There is a general understanding of what the word organic is. Now organic is pretty much three main things. The first one is the fact that there is no synthetic herbicides or pesticides added, meaning that there is none of that agriculture stuff that they're spraying all over the plants, that isn't on there. The second thing that makes something organic is that there has not been any human intervention when it comes to gene editing involved. So pretty much the humans have not ended up doing their little gene editing and whatnot on the plant and that is what makes it organic and therefore that makes it healthier. Now the third factor of organic is because of both of these things, this is what makes organic food healthier and it's the fact that there just isn't human intervention involved. Now herbicides and pesticides are some of the things that might be sprayed on the plants and therefore though because they are synthetic that makes them dangerous and not healthy. However, we're going to look at, into this in a little bit more detail because there's more than meets the eye when it comes to this statement. Now, let's just compare synthetic pesticides and herbicides to natural pesticides and herbicides. Now, if we were to look at the synthetic pesticides found in conventional foods, we would find out that it's actually 0.0000, .0000 four grams are found in basically these fruits and vegetables. However, the natural pesticides found in organic foods is actually only around 1.5 grams. Now that might not sound like a lot, but if you compare that to my previous number, you might realize very, very quickly, that's actually very, very big. Now this number might seem a little bit difficult to understand, but if we were to put this into a percentage, we could actually see that natural pesticides actually are about 37,499% higher than the synthetic pesticides. Now that means there is that much more pesticides and herbicides found in that plant naturally than the ones that are synthetically sprayed on it. Yeah, that's a little bit shocking because that's actually quite a bit. And as you can see, there is a lot, and I mean a lot of herbicides and pesticides naturally found in the plant, and they have to protect themselves in some way. Now, a GMO, as we talked about before, is basically just a genetically modified organism. And that means that humans have one way or another tampered with that thing through genetic engineering of some sort, and basically doing a little bit of splicing here and there, and that clearly is not healthy. However, this actually isn't too helpful. And the reason this isn't too helpful is because if we actually look at this from a historical context, we will see that there's something a little bit strange here. Now, first off, we already know that all modern fruits and vegetables are the results of human intervention. And this is because of the agricultural revolution. Now, do you know what this turned into? Or maybe this, or even this, or this? Well, yeah. If you could guess what those turned into, yep, that's right, those are the modern day plants that we have today. Now, as you can see, because we can see a completely different plant than what used to exist before, maybe you can tell that maybe there actually isn't that much of a difference between a GMO and basically artificial selection, which is exactly what humans did and shown in the example before. And this has to do with the fact that you're getting the exact same result in the end. The only difference between the humans doing it with the gene splicing is the fact that you're getting all that exact same result, except you're getting it within one generation. So it is happening very, very quickly. However, if you do the exact same thing through artificial selection, and you basically are constantly inbreeding the plant one way or another, then you will end up with these giant massive fruits that don't exist in regular nature at all. Now, the conclusion of this is the fact that both GMO and 
Artificial selection, which is what humans have been doing for the past 10,000 years, are both unhealthy because they both do not give what plants originally used to look like, and even then they still aren't healthy. And this has to do with the fact that understanding a little bit of the plant biochemistry will make us realize they really aren't. Now, there are a lot of health concerns with actually plant-based food if you didn't know about them. And one of them is actually chronic inflammation. Now, if you suffer from any sort of bloating, if you feel nauseous, if you maybe even have brain fog, fatigue, there's a lot of things that this can result in. Narcolepsy. Yes, there is a pretty good chance that a lot of that is actually coming from plants. This is because, once again, those herbicides and pesticides those plants produce are actually there to target you because they don't want predators eating them. However, they can't defend themselves the same way that animals do. Animals will usually punch or quite literally stomp, scrape, bite, whatever that is trying to end up killing them or maybe they'll just run away. However, plants can't do this. And because plants can't do this, they have to defend themselves a different way. They don't defend themselves mechanically. They actually defend themselves chemically. Now, some of those problems that those plant phytotoxins can cause when it comes to inflammation could be something like arthritis, it could be brain fog, or it could even be depression. There is a long, long list of phytotoxins which damage and cause all of these problems. The second health concern with plant-based foods is actually the fact that there is a lot of toxin generation. Now, this is a little bit strange because what exactly is toxin generation? Well, toxin generation is pretty much another way of saying reactive oxygen species are being created. And this has to do with one glucose oxidation and it also has to do with the fact that you're basically damaging the mitochondria you're causing mitochondrial dysfunction and this once again is not what you want to be doing this has to do with the fact that complex one and oxidative phosphorylation is much more prone to electron leakage and when you're eating plants or vegetables or fruits of any sort you are actually stimulating that exact part and that lets off reactive oxygen species and it's really damaging now if you're interested in that whole science behind it then once again it's all in my science behind carnivore playlist so i recommend you check that out because it explains everything now the third health concern is actually fiber itself now this might this one really might shock you in fact this one might make no sense to you at all because you probably heard that fiber is essential and completely necessary however Fiber is actually damaging, and we know that it's damaging through multiple ways. One of the reasons is the fact that fiber is completely useless for us because we can't convert it into short-chain fatty acids because we don't have a cecum. But there actually is a second reason why fiber is very, very damaging, and we have a very good study to demonstrate this. In this study, around 60 participants actually ended up either one, increasing the amount of fiber that they intook, either two, decreasing the amount of fiber, or three, they completely removed the fiber altogether. Now, what do you think the results would have been? You probably would think that increasing the fiber intake would actually lead to less stomach pain, less gut bloating, less constipation, less anal bleeding, and less just everything, stomach cramps, all of it. Well, turns out the exact opposite thing actually happened. All of those five things that I mentioned before actually increased in the high fiber group. Yes, that's right. Increasing their fiber actually increased their stomach problems and their stomach pain, every single one of those five. And what exactly did lowering fiber do? Well, lowering fiber actually managed to lower all of those problems. Now you might say, well, what about the no fiber group? They must have had more problems, right? Well, it turns out not a single person, and I literally do mean not a single person, ended up experiencing any single problems. Yes, that graph that you see right there, that is not actually just missing data points. They literally experienced no problems. So this is a very, very clear indicator that fiber is actually not just supposed to be supposedly healthy, it's actually unhealthy, and I mean very, very unhealthy. Now, when it comes to understanding plant biology and why all of this is happening in the first place, we're actually gonna have to look a little bit closer as to why plants are quite literally killing themselves, and in the process, it's actually very unhealthy for us to eat them. Now, plants, you might have heard, do go through photosynthesis, and yes, they do, and photosynthesis is absolutely crucial because it's what allows us to breathe oxygen, and it's where basically all of that oxygen is coming from for us. However, during the process of photosynthesis, paradoxically, they're actually killing themselves at a very, very rapid rate. Now, the reason why they're actually killing themselves at a extremely rapid rate has to do with the fact of the Rubisco enzyme. Now, you might have not heard of the Rubisco enzyme before. However, the Rubisco enzyme is very essential because it is a very important part in that process of photosynthesis for the plant to make glucose. Specifically, it's part of the Calvin cycle and that converts 
converts CO2 to glucose. Afterwards, that creates 3PGA leading to G3P and ultimately glucose in the end. Now, the problem is that Rubisco isn't quite good at its job. In fact, it's very, very bad at its job and it causes a lot of problems in the process for the plant. During this entire process, Rubisco actually creates one reactive oxygen species out of every four times it does its job. Now that's a very, very big amount if you don't know because that basically means that it's constantly being forced to generate tons of these antioxidants in order to protect itself from killing itself. Now reactive oxygen species generated from that Rubisco enzyme is actually once again even more damaging to the plant and this has to do with the fact that plants are filled with polyunsaturated fats. Now these polyunsaturated fats are insanely, insanely susceptible to lipid peroxidation, which is very, very damaging because another way of saying lipid peroxidation is imagine uh, radiation on your skin. That's sort of a way that you can look at lipid peroxidation. It's very, very damaging. And what'll happen is it will lice and it will rip the cell open, which is not healthy as well as creating a toxic off product afterwards. Now plants actually do have defense mechanisms against all of this ROS that are being generated or all of these reactive oxygen species that are being generated by itself, specifically the Rubisco enzyme. And some of them could be vitamin C, vitamin E, it could even be SOD, superoxide dismutase, or it could even be glutathione. There are many, many antioxidants. Now, if you ever wondered why there's so much vitamin C in plants or even vitamin E in plants, now you actually know why. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're nutritious. It actually has to do with the fact that they are killing themselves at such a rapid rate, they must stockpile on these essential vitamins for itself because if they don't they will die to themselves. Now the problem with all of these antioxidants is it significantly and I mean very very significantly does hinder the plant's growth and this is not good especially if you're trying to grow things. Now a more efficient Rubisco enzyme has been developed and what ended up happening as you can see is clearly that plant grew way way quicker and that means that it wouldn't have to produce tons of these antioxidants that it used to have to produce in order to protect itself from itself. So that is already a better start. But once again, plants are not healthy. And that has to do with the previous things that I've mentioned, phytotoxins and all of the plant health concerns that are actually very, very damaging, like fiber and the whole sort. Now, if you don't understand the science behind this, here's a little bit of an analogy to help you understand what exactly is going on and this whole thing about organic. Now imagine there's an oasis and it's called Organic Oasis and it's a really popular health spa that claims to offer all natural chemical free treatments for ultimate wellness. The spa completely boasts pure mineral baths, for instance pesticide free produce. It also boasts traditional massage techniques like non-GMO crops and finally natural herbal wraps like organic plant foods. And not only that, within this spa, there is a baker and he's a very, very clumsy baker because his name, you might have guessed it, is Rubisco. Now, every single time Rubisco tries to make a loaf of bread, he's basically otherwise converting CO2 to glucose, there is a one in four chance that he will knock over a jar of flour. And this jar of flour we can consider as reactive oxygen species. Now the bakery, basically the plant, employs a team of cleaners, which we can view as antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E, to constantly clean up these messes. Now the problem with this bakery is the fact that it spends so much on cleaning that it can't even afford to expand or make more bread. Now, if Rubisco could be trained to be a little bit less clumsy, for instance, genetically modified, then the bakery would save money on cleaning and it could produce much, much more bread and basically grow faster. Now, meanwhile, during all of this, the guests flock to the organic oasis, believing that it is the healthiest possible option. However, upon experience, they realize that the pure mineral baths actually contain far more minerals than tap water, and it really irritates their skin like natural pesticides, basically, in found in that organic produce. The traditional massages use techniques that haven't evolved with modern understanding of the body, and this causes way more harm than good because they're not actually massaging you, they're almost like beating you. There are seven 
key takeaways for this video. First, organic food and the food which has herbicides and pesticides sprayed on them actually have a negligible, if no difference, when it comes to the amount of herbicides and pesticides sprayed on them. Second, GMOs are actually a faster method of crop modification and basically they're not inherently natural. Third, plant compounds can cause inflammation and health issues in every single person because they always induce that inflammation and there's a lot of other problems. Fourth, reducing fiber intake will improve digestive health. Fifth, organic labeling is often more about marketing than actually health benefits in the first place. Sixth, Plants' inefficient energy production, basically that Rubisco enzyme, necessitates high antioxidant content, which is very, very harmful, especially when it comes to vitamin and mineral interactions and reducing the amount of minerals and vitamins that you're getting. And seventh, finally understanding that plant biology actually has some really, really big impacts on the human health. Now, if you're interested in more details on why exactly plants and their antioxidants are actually very, very harmful for you, then I recommend you check out my video on vitamins and mineral interactions and the science behind carnivore playlist because it will explain everything there and it will go into a lot more detail on what exactly is going on. Thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, then please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below because it really does help the channel grow and it's a great way of showing your appreciation. And if you're really interested in seeing my videos ahead of time, then I recommend you click the join button down below where you can see my videos ahead of time. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.